Hi, this is Ashishat Bedekar and welcome to my show, The ARB Show. Uh, I'm thrilled to introduce today's guest, Jatin. Jatin is a pioneer in private sector initiatives in weather forecasting and information services in India. Uh, he was someone who was already, always fascinated with weather, even as a 17-year-old and as a professional journalist. Jatin launched SkyMet in 2003 with the intention of providing reliable and accessible weather forecast. And uh, their contribution is perhaps the biggest uh, because they have really solved the monsoon forecasting problem in India. Uh, currently, SkyMet has a massive IoT presence. It has close to 7,500 automated weather stations, 27 lightning detectors, 200 air quality sensors installed around the country. They also have set up around 400 agriculture sensors that enable farmers to understand their crops at a micro scale. He's also a founder of Gram Cover, which provides innovative approach to insurance distribution to in rural India. Welcome to the show, Jatin. Do share your life journey and your vision for SkyMet. And also, if you may like to touch upon why weather forecasting is tough and is also a source for many jokes. All to you. <laughs> Um, see, I am a consequence of destiny as opposed to a consequence of will. I am an art student. I'm better off being a journalist, writing. Maybe I should have had a, um, I should have had a career in entertainment, uh, maybe even stand-up comedy. <laughs> but I ended up whether getting into the weather business and getting into insurance and underwriting is is not uh, my plan. It just so happens that my father has been working in this field since 1989, and he, and he had been working with the IMD for a very long period of time. And, and you grew up in a in a Hindu undivided family business, so you you pick things up. And it so happened that I had got engaged, and I had to do something meaningful. And I thought of uh, providing weather forecast to television networks in 2003, uh, and that is how this business actually uh, took off. I started working with Sahar Sama in 2003, and I started distributing uh, weather information to them. So, and and then I went from television, uh, news channels, which were coming up, NDTV 24-7, Sahara Samai, CNN TV 18, they were all creations of 2004-2005. And then I started working with with newspapers. Uh, I, in, I mean, the first newspaper I ever worked with was Hindustan Times, then I started working Telegraph, the Hindu in 2007. Then initially, I think we came, uh, we ran into each other because of Nokia Live Tools way back in uh, 2010. Then I, I mean, it took me, I mean, in my so-called journey between 2003 to 2010 to realize that the nerve of Indian agriculture is better. I did not know this. I did not work with agriculture all the way. I mean, from 3 to 10 is our careers for, for some people. It took me that long to figure this out because, and, in, in, and if you really ask me in India, we're still fighting that one problem. How do I give a reliable weather forecast on a plot level? That is relevant to the farmer, then the farmer might be willing to pay for it. And up until that, that point of time, you know, the Indian Meteorological Department was what it was. It was this old British institution that was not open to any kind of change. I was seen as a challenger, or although in 20 years of work, you know, we are collaborators, not challengers. I cannot, because the government, see, the nature of government and government scientific institutions have changed, especially in the last nine years when Prime Minister Modi has been there. They have become more collaborative, they have become more open, and there's a tremendous amount of pressure to generate output out of research. So, you know, and, and, and I think that is changing, and now we get a lot of government support, especially, especially from the Ministry of Agriculture. But anyway, I'm, I'm jumping track. And as I connected with agriculture, I became the first guy, until today probably the only guy who was trying to solve this problem, and I got tremendous amount of support. I got support internationally by some kind of recognition. We, as climate was named as one, one, one of 10 companies with game-changing solutions to climate change way back in 2009 by The Economist magazine. Uh, then I got, uh, you know, uh, nominated for the technology se section in Sankalp Awards. Then I got a, I, I was incubated by Wilcrow in 2010. Uh, then, you know, uh, I only award was for setting up the first food and agri-tech fund. I did not know what a VC was. I did not know what LPs were. I did not know what a food and agri-tech fund was. I did not know what a cap table was. I knew nothing. I just went along with it. And when I took my first VC fund, and this is a, and I, I and I would, uh, and I would tell this to anybody who wants to create a startup, because I've run from 2003 to 2011, say 12, uh, what would be called a bootstrap business. And when you take a venture capitalist fund, 
then you true then you have to give it all you've got to stay true to those projections and that is when my my own entrepreneurial dna completely changed because i didn't really, i had never seen um uh, pogneur had given me a million dollars that was about 4 and a half crores in 2000 on the august of 2011 that was the maximum amount of money i had ever seen in but then i i started hiring professionals i started getting technicians and i came across the concept of birds that you know you can run through i have run through i have now raised up to 50 crores in in different rounds for different companies and i have burned through 50 crores also see so you know and that creates a different amount of pressure because when you raise the kind of money on effectively theoretical percept as if i had this i would do this things don't work out any time and then i was under a lot of pressure in my 2012 that you know we had spent the money that i didn't have much to show for it uh weather forecasting had not picked up uh and then one of the a gentleman who today is the ceo of skymet who yogesh patan came from an instrumentation background and told me that boss there is something called a weather based crop insurance in india it's a government scheme they need they need companies that can set up weather stations for settlement of crops i said okay that's how it's interesting and i started putting up sensors and then my journey has kind of been with that policy for this say 12 to till to 23 became the biggest network Started working with insurance companies, got noted by state governments, and gave us critical mass and size. So what used to be a two crore company, when it became four or five years ago, forty one crore company because the size key that was providing um, uh, services to insurance of claims, and that was the only pool of capital or business that was willing to pay for uh, you know remote sensing services, agri advisory services, weather services. uh and i also at the same time kept on improving weather forecasting you know uh, and and one of the things that i i wanted to do which i think i finally have solved now is uh, is is monsoon for see i i i am a weather forecaster at heart because i've seen the ecosystem i wanted to be the person to solve that problem i wanted to make a come on every mobile phone i didn't realize that You know the reason why IBM and AccuWeather is on every mobile phone. There's no other better person in the world doing it because there's a whole chain of technologies that are required. That it was, it was my, how do I say, complete lack of. Uh, you know, these are things that nobody really tells you until you figure these things out. Which I, you know, it has taken me that much uh, time to solve a lot of these problems. And I also, but one of the things I knew was that you could figure out monsoon by looking at the El Nino relation. and i hacked it i hacked that and i'm not sure if we made money out of it but the fact is that one of the things in my lifetime that i'm kind of i, I you know skymet and the people behind skymet and the investors should take credit for is in monsoon which which people if they go back to 2011 12 when i started doing the monsoon forecast was uh, could be anything now the signal has a 60% probability a fidelity of in january telling you what's going to happen in june july august or september we are the only people and we actually made the imd better at doing it and i should also tell you and the rest of the world that we are the only country in the world that is capable of a seasonal forecast of its rainfall season which is an achievement in itself for everybody and i think we should take this model for the world because when we look at climate change we're looking at at swings in temperature and 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 basically precipitation the power of being able to tell a season you know basically six months in advance and getting it right creates tremendous amount of efficiency in managing carbon footprint and everything that is a domino related to it so okay. you know so that is the weather forecasting business and i think now we uh, we are working very closely with government to really enhance observation for uh, probabilities agricultural census probabilities uh, our data sets uh, agri advisories um weather forecasting weather observations for instance the government is coming up with a program called winds weather information network and data systems where they they going to the ministry of agriculture is going to set up about 2 lakh rain gauges in this country one in every gb 2 wow. lakh is massive and and i hope you know we are able to do uh, a bit of that also i because i understood weather data and because i understood that i agree especially both our season kharif and rabi are directly linked to the data i got pulled into climate finance which in my case would be understanding the prime minister fasal bima yojana and the weather based crop insurance scheme so it came to me as a you know and and as an entrepreneur i was restless and i thought that you know data is so hard maybe if i get into the transaction side i should be able to do a better job of selling 
weather insurance, you know, which is non-subsidized. So I created a company five years ago, six years ago called Gram Cover, which is a rural insurance broker, which has done very well. We've done Series A, we've raised money in FY23. It's actually now bigger than Skyward in size. Oh, it's done about 45 million of uh, uh, revenue in FY23. We've got about 4 million policies, 7 million policies of, uh, in, uh, spread across 4 million farmers. We do the subsidized scheme, the, uh, the parametric scheme. We also are now distributing life insurance. Uh, we are also doing uh, auto insurance, for example. So we're trying to become an integrated distributor of, in, of, of, of insurance uh, in, in, in India, especially in rural India. Excellent, so excellent. The, Great. Yeah. So, so a fan, fantastic uh, life journey. And also, you know, why I was very keen on talking to you, because, you know, when we talk of uh, weather, generally hear about the terms El Nino, La Nina, Enjo, etc. Mm -hmm. before the rainy season. But I don't think many of the uh, audience, right, uh, really appreciate the business applications of weather forecasting, right? And hence, I would really request you to talk about the top five uh, business applications of weather forecasting and that would be really helpful for the audience to appreciate that it is just not uh, about how much rains would happen and what is the kind of uh, rain forecast which of course agriculture and uh, drinking water is the immediate thing but there are multi many facets to the business potential of weather forecasting so you know your insights would be really valuable for the audience uh, over to you jatin what would be the first uh, weather application uh, which you would kind of talk about um ashish so when we talk about weather forecasting i will stretch it to say applications of weather data because okay i thought okay. that telling the future was valuable until i got into this business then i realized that telling the past is probably more valuable so obviously india does not have enough weather observation India has a very diverse uh, orography, geography, even in a small area. You've got mountains, you've got hills, you've got lakes, you've got plateaus, you've got forests, you've got dry land, you know, dry, dry land, you've got uh, a mix of deciduous forests, you, you know, you've got you know, marshlands. So precipitation distributes, its, uh, there are many factors for precipitation, but in situ, orography is also very important. And the activity that we carried out will be very important. You've got um, urban heat island effect also creates its own mesoscale weather systems. So, observatories and observations, if you really ask me in India, the weather business is, is started something by us, me and my father, I, 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 I you know, we, we started this. You cannot forecast until you have observed. And India, frankly, for the last 130 years has never really observed. I think observation is a business is only going to start in 2024, 2025. Okay. So, uh, in, in an organized, documented, regulated way, so, which is, you know, so people say, why the weather forecast is not good? Because we've never really worked on it. You know, we were a colonial, uh, you know, the Indian Logical Department is an offshoot of a colonial government that was created to forecast the monsoon because the taxes would drop and so drought would happen. Beyond that, fundamentally improving the quality of forecast was not the original British mandate. Then until 1980, the IMD used to come under the Civil Aviation Ministry. Then later it came under Agriculture Act. So, so it, it still, if we get into the institutional system, the infrastructure initially, the electronics or whatever hard infrastructure that they created was for Civil Aviation. For ag creating any sensory infrastructure in India for agriculture is very, very hard and very, very expensive. And it is only happening now. So if you really ask me the first thing fundamentally that this country needs, is something that, you know, why they say that U.S. forecast is so good? Because that country invested in observatories for 100, 100 years. And they meticulously kept good records, which helped them in creating forecasts later. Which is a process we're only going to start now. Okay. So that is, if you ask me, the first application is getting your observation system. The second, of course, is I would divide it into two, uh, two, time, uh, two temporal uh, categories. One is short-range forecast. You're in Bombay. Is it going to flood tomorrow or not? Is a very fundamental question that every Mumbai can ask. And if you ask me in the last three to four years, you know because now the warnings have become better. That's because we set up the first, climate set up the first meso network, observatory network in Bombay at our cost, which was then followed through by the IITM and then the generation of forecast and everything happened. And about seven, eight years ago, Finally, the government of India set up a Doppler weather radar, which doesn't function that well. Though. I, I think Bombay deserves a better radar. Though. 
but the fact is that is the fundamental need of weather from a disaster management point of view okay then also from an agricultural point of view you know if to sow or not to sow to cut or not to cut to spray or not to spray to fertilize or not to fertilize are all dependent on weather now here we look at two three time frame short medium and long we had fidelity nowhere then first we improved the short range forecast so but we improved the problem is the moment you improve the short range forecast you improve it you know scale now you ashish are going to uh, argue and say is it going to rain in kandivali versus is it going to rain in kolaba now it is not necessarily rain in kolaba and kandivali at the same time it probably doesn't right but the, if you look at take an accurate weather forecast it will probably tell you the same so how do we de- define one grid to another so that's another challenge then is medium range medium range is more useful for agriculture so is there going to be a seasonal rain over my plot or not over the next day to two days then the third one from an application point of view is long range are we looking at a drought or are we looking at a wet season is august going to be dry is september going to be good so the, so once you start solving these problems out your business phases start becoming better so from consumer weather mobile weather applications farmer subscriptions precision agriculture irrigation management um, you know commodities planning uh, pricing for example are completely dependent on this the other business so this is about consumer uh, consumers you and i using weather information farmers using weather information government using weather information government is a serious user of my weather information both in both in situ and forecast for governance uh, disaster management we work with kerala as well as nagaland and we have observatories and we give forecast so that they can do their disaster management with cuts and droughts uh, more accurately um and the third one and the other big user of weather forecast is energy both renewable as well as non renewable energy so solar yeah. forecasting wind forecasting mm. the scheduling you have to get your scheduling and your uh, your forecast of your uh, power uh, absolutely right mm-hmm. and then there is um, there is your even your non renewable your, your uh, non renewable sector like if you're a power distributor in mumbai or if you're a power distributor in delhi you need to account for the your your load if you are a state level power mm-hmm. distributor you need to account for load there agricultural load right. now for example the maharashtra has a dry uh, dry august and there's tremendous amount of pressure on agriculture on irrigation that means tremendous amount of power needs if it does not rain in in and and the monsoon and it turns into a drought then coal production actually goes down because there's not enough water for washing correct so that is the other application the new application that is now coming in Uh, is basically going to be health, health because okay. we are seeing because we are seeing heat index coming up. We are seeing okay. temperatures in Maharashtra going up to 51 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now that has you know it, it, so if you took a look at Western nations, you have these severe heat waves coming in Europe and the US. So they are now getting tropical diseases like outbreaks like malaria. Okay. We in India are dealing with a whole new set of issues that our human physiology cannot deal with. Uh, a temperature of 51 degrees Celsius because it becomes hot, and if there is enough moisture, then the the body is not able to release as much heat through uh, through perspiring, and the internal body temperature starts becoming very very hot. And if you are not able to cool it down, you know you are going to create create problems for yourself. So that is the uh, third one. It's really asked, which is going to be the new application of uh, weather information. right so also can you share light like, on banks insurance because i'm sure there would also be uh, some applications on that yeah so so uh, on insurance i would connect it to governance uh, okay. basically for the pradhan uh, fasal bima yojana the complete payouts in terms of payouts as well as pricing of products is de- whether and yield dependent or purely weather dependent if it is only the weather based crop insurance scheme where they use say el nino indexing looking at other el nino years looking at what the yield and distribution and payouts were uh, versus um, you know um, uh, and also post facto settlement of claims in banks we work very closely with kcc where we have been able to do correlation analysis between yield as well as weather and we'll able to be been able to downscale at a plot level and we're able to uh, help in the distribution of kcc claims um in um the distribution of uh, kcc uh, sorry distribution of kcc no to small and marginal farmers and we've automated that uh, basically digital kcc for state bank of india icici as well as hcfc uh, kcc just for the audience is kisan credit card it's a kind of a, a farmer credit card if i may use the term loosely correct yes 
Yes, yes. Okay. Excellent. So here also, can you share some kind of uh, uh, statistics on the performance of a scenario before uh, weather forecast is incorporated into the whole product or into the whole uh, business and impact of weather forecasting? For example, I'm just uh, telling aloud that from a power management perspective, when you add weather, it improves your, uh, you know, directly top line by so much percent or improves your uh, bottom line by so much percent do you have any statistics or any uh, any analysis on any any applications uh, i can give you a sense whether forecast in the incorporation of power will not sure if it's going to increase your top line but it's definitely going to you know contain your uh, increase your bottom line because you'll make fewer losses for sure your cost of doing business will go down because effectively, you know, and, and, and power companies do hundreds of crores of business on a day, which is completely temperature dependent. So you can absolutely see that. Um, from a, uh, I, I was talking about, you know, power companies can make a lot of money. Uh, renewable energy companies can basically double their profits just by being able to forecast the amount of solar and wind uh, energy that they can generate um, by better observatories. Uh, you know, Governor of India puts in about 30,000 crores of uh, premium uh, of premium subsidy between state and central government every year in crop insurance. And, you know, payouts can be up, way up, you know, 30, 40, 50,000 crores, depending on how the product is structured. And there's tremendous amount of issues in, in, in settling the claims because you have to use satellite data to do that. The, uh, one of the ways and means of coming up with a good production figure at a plot level is the usage of precipitation data. If that precipitation is accurate, then the crop modeling will become better. And I'm guaranteeing you that even in drought years, your payouts are going to fall by at least 30 to 40%. Because right now we are using approximation, not actual uh, data. And your basis risk is, is getting, and is getting uh, magnified. Not only is your basis risk getting magnified, your premiums are shooting up because of uncertainty and because of lack of data. So that I think it will bring tremendous amount of efficiency in this whole crop insurance scheme in India. It will also go far a long way. So right now we are deploying about two hundred fifty billion dollars of credit in India. Uh, there's just a significant amount of NPAs in that business. There's a significant amount. There's also a lack of risk taking by private banks to increase the KCC portfolio. The KCC portfolio comes under what is called I think. Uh, Priority is PSL lending, right? So it's something that they have to satisfy, but it's not something that they really want to do for good reasons. Political, you don't know where the risk is, you don't know if your money is going to come back, uh, you have most likely have to you have to rotate that kind of credit. But with weather data, if you're able to figure out, and if well, you have the forecast, you have the actuals, and you're able to give correlation, then you figure out crops as well as apart from credit uh, behavior, you're going to figure out geographies, and you're, you'll be able to finally lend to people who could not otherwise receive credit. So my whole idea is that you can use good past weather data and forecast data as a collateral against the land. Because a good, a good monsoon in India is better, I'm not going to use the word guarantee, better than a drought in getting your money back from a rural investment. Fantastic. fantastic. That is the Now, if, you, if, you, if, your econo if your econometrics works, if your geography, your credit, is, is, is linked to the correlations. Right now, you have a broad correlation. The idea is that at every level, you're able to squeeze that correlation. Then you're creating new credit markets and insurance markets because you've got good precipitation information. I got mean, it. If you look at the impact of both. Yeah. So essentially, you know, by uh, using more accurate uh, weather data, you're reducing the risk for many of such cyclical or weather yes, dependent yes, industries. Yes, yes. And that goes into consumer finance, that goes into um, FMCG products, you know, you can name it, but um, but the from a business case point of view, if you want to monetize on this knowledge, it is first going to be uh, take governmental operations and and climate finance linked to agriculture first. That's where you get lot of scale. Got it. Now uh, coming to AI. I mean, that's, that's the, of course, uh, elephant in the room. Everyone talks about it. So how do you see uh, weather forecasting and your line of business with AI? Because what one would think is, you know, because of the uh, many parameters at work, right? Maybe AI can find out some patterns or some recognition which typically gets missed out. Do you see or are you investing and using it in some way? Uh, Ashish, AI 
does not deliver in web of it, it just does not because AI, the dynamics of weather forecasting are different from the kind of problem that AI wants to solve. Yeah. I think I think okay. AI solves human interactions, movement is far more predictable than a thunderstorm. Okay, a thunderstorm has a certain okay. predictability. Okay, right. now you can use statistical methods to improve forecast, but the fundamental forecast behavior depends on supercomputing and the raw parameters that go into the equation. Understood, understood. That science of AI, I, I mean, rather AI is a lot of modeling and pattern recognition. I'm not an engineer, I want to understand that. But if you're not able to figure out variability, then AI will repeat a pattern. Got okay, it. consumer behavior is based on repetition of a pattern. But if I'm looking at thunderstorm one day and 45 degrees Celsius grade the other, and then something else, then... You know, I, I don't think AI so far, if you look at pure weather forecasting technologies, AI has really made, maybe it can have a marginal improvement of weather forecast, but where the fundamental is wrong, AI will also give you a wrong answer. All right. We are using AI on the consumer side. So we have just created SkyMet AI, our weather forecasting app. I am urging everybody who's listening to that podcast to, even if you're not interested in the weather forecast, to download it, because we've made a conversational AI that talks to you. It's built for farmers, and farmers can ask a question and it replies back in multiple languages. Wow! So on those ends, I think AI works. Uh, in my other company, Gram Cover, uh, we've actually created a muzzle recognition app, which actually identifies each animal separately. AI absolutely works. But in fundamental of either both observation as well as weather forecasting, I think AI. You should actually stay clear of AI because it will. It will convince you that AI will solve the problem, but what it might do is perpetuate an error. Very simple science that you need to fix. Excellent, excellent. So thanks, uh, Jatin. It was a wonderful uh, discussion, and I'm sure the audience would really uh, love it. And thanks again, dear listeners, for tuning okay. in. Actually, sorry, it was uh, a while. I will, I'm just helter skelter running from Twitter to post. No, no, I, that's, I wish that, I'd done it earlier. That, that's fine. And for the audience, again, do subscribe, share. And like the podcast. Bye for now. Talk to you soon. Sure. Thank you. Bye. Bye.